There are many terms used to describe learning that is delivered online via the internet, ranging from distance education to computerized electronic learning, online learning, and many others. However, conventionally, courses that are specifically delivered through the internet, other than the classroom with a physical tutor, will be largely classified as e-learning. We have via Skype, Ronke Posh, and Tolu Kolaoni to take us through what e-learning is all about. Uh, good afternoon, you both. Good afternoon. Uh, good to have you. Now, very quickly, we hear of a return to schools this week. Is your school uh, one of them? And this question is for Ronke. Oh, good, good afternoon. Um, turn to schools. Um, physically, no one is in school at the moment. And if you're talking about online, schools have been engaging children since the lockdown. So essentially it's not really been a return to school because some schools have been piloting systems right okay let me quickly go to tolu now who herself is a parent good afternoon tolu can you hear me good afternoon yes i can hear you now just like uh, Ron uh, ronke rightly said there some schools uh, they, they've been have been in operation in spite of the lockdown uh, through online what has been your experience as a parent who's got children i believe in school also Okay, so um, we resumed, uh, my children's school resumed last week, and um, it's been good. So we were able to um, sit exams before the lockdown, fortunately. So um, they took the holiday as expected, as planned, and now the school has resumed online. And so far, so good. Okay, because I was just going to ask you, how do you feel about it? But like you said, so far, so good. So I move to Ronke now. Uh, what measures have you put in place to ensure that you are delivering value for the parents and students in this new development of having to study online? Um, we've done, I've done a lot of research personally. Um, there's a lot of training that has had to come into place. A lot of um, collaborations with schools internationally. Um, I have quite a number of educator friends around the world and ongoing communication with the parents so that we can know how it's going down with them. All right. So how is it going down with you, uh, Tolu, in terms of the demands that the school are making? Uh, you know, this uh, new development is not what we are used to, so to speak. And it's, I believe it's also not uh, the way that you have gone about it in terms of education. What, what I mean, what are your complaints? What are your challenges? Okay, well, um, so there's a part of having to incur costs that you typically would not incur, like um, having to pay for internet and backup internet, having to run power, um, getting individual laptops for the children, and um, having to also spend your own personal time and energy ensuring that everything works together smoothly. So it's been it's been it's been a bit of um, um, uh, some work, a bit of challenge here and there. But really, um, I I want to commend the school because they've actually really really done a hell of a good job on very short notice um, to ensure that this is as seamless as as um, it could be. We're still having some hiccups on their part, but largely we see them making conscious efforts to rectify whatever problems we're having on a daily basis, like on a daily. So mm, it's a learning, it's a work in progress, really, but we're getting, we're moving. It's a work in but, progress. Yeah. Right. Okay, so let me yes. come to Ron Ken now. Uh, do you hear these same complaints or these same concerns from parents of your own, uh, what's in your own school? And do you understand this uh, sort of complaints, you know, of some parents that are essentially being left to foot the bill of what amounts to a social experiment, if you like? Okay. So um, when you, I mean, a number of questions there. When you talk about uh, be the social experiment, um, a lot of innovation has happened worldwide. We have robotics, we have steam, um, we have AI, we have data science, we have so many things. They all started as um, social experiments. So this might be a good social experiment in the right direction. Um, I don't want us to um, assume that we're using parents as guinea pig. I'll speak for the Porsche school, for example, and schools like Green Springs, for example, that are doing an amazing job. They piloted. So we piloted prior to resumption. 
We engage the children online on the different platforms that we planned to use. So when it was time to resume, there were little or no challenges. As a matter of fact, the few challenges we had were actually from the families that didn't engage in the pilot. Mm. All right, again, uh, Ronke, I stay with you. Uh, you must share the concern of some of those who do not have access to e-learning, much less quality learning. How should we be building uh, for the future in the midst of this disruption? So there are those who have access and those who do not have access, both in the same society. This has always been the case. The reason why many people are saying it now is because it's biting more, more people now. We generally, as a, as a nation, the government has, no, has rejected a lot of people, a lot of children. They've not been going to school for years. They've not had good furniture, good chairs, good uniforms, even food to eat for many years. The reason why people are screaming now, because the COVID-19 is biting more families, even in the private sector. And that is why people are pretending to care right now. Um, it is biting everybody, it's biting um, really, really hard. Um, I, I, do, um, I do feel for um, families that cannot um, engage, um, understand the pressures. The third term now has been curbed by the government and we're not supposed to um, engage officially in the third term, which will further keep the Nigerian child back because many children around the world are actually being educated at the moment, mm -hmm. even in deprived areas. I have letters from all around the world, which I have, um, I have been, since my research started, deprived areas, they actually drop lunch for children, even those that don't have access to devices. They loan them laptops or phones or tell them to come and get learning packs. So there are ways around it. We just need our government to do as much as they can to ensure. But as we know already, people need to eat first, even before they can think about anything else. Absolutely. So the mandate still remains on the government. All right, you're absolutely correct there. Thank you so very much, Ronke, and thank you to, uh, for your time. Please keep safe, both thank of you. Thank you so much, and you too. Thank you. Thank right. you.